So last week, I put out my first 360 video. A lot of you guys were actually surprised that I'm good at snowboarding. I mean, I live in the snow, man. Come on, my house is literally buried in snow right now. But a lot of you guys had questions about my workflow in Premiere Pro and how I'm editing 360 videos. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's roll the intro. Welcome back to the channel, Filmmaking Homies. It's your boy, Cody Blue. And before we get into today's tutorial, I just wanted to ask you guys, what do you think about 360 footage? Because for me personally, I had no intentions of ever getting a 360 camera, but now that I've used one, I actually think it's pretty rad. You get some super cool angles, some angles that you could never get on any other type of camera. And it's a super creative and cool way to film yourself, even in selfie mode. It just looks way better than like a standard typical selfie. So I'm just curious to hear what you guys have to think about it. Is 360 footage super cool or is it super lame? But with that out of the way, today we're talking about how to edit 360 footage in Premiere Pro. Now, I'll be totally honest with you guys, when I first started working with my 360 footage, I was just like ready to pull my hair out. It was a total pain in the ass. I couldn't figure out how to get it to play in Premiere Pro and I couldn't figure out how to turn the camera around and it just nothing was working and I was about to scrap the entire video. But the more I worked with it, I finally got it figured out and I learned a couple of things along the way that I wanted to pass along to you guys. Now, I'm definitely not a 360 video expert, but I did learn a couple of things that I think will be helpful and will help you guys when you ultimately decide to try out 360 for yourself. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and jump to Premiere Pro and get started. Welcome back to my computer, everybody. Now today we're talking about how to edit 360 footage in Premiere Pro. Now, unfortunately, as far as I know, there really isn't like a native way to just shoot your 360 footage, import it into Premiere Pro and start editing right away. In most cases, you're gonna have to stitch the footage and export it into a format that works with Premiere Pro. So in my case, I'm using the Insta360 Studio for the 1X camera, which is the camera that I have. But pretty much every 360 camera, as far as I know, is going to have its own software. I know like the GoPro Fusion has its own software, obviously Insta360 does. So depending on your camera, you're going to need to use their software in order to stitch and convert your footage for Premiere pros. So in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my INSV files, which are the files I recorded on my camera. I'm just going to grab a couple of them and I'm going to drag them into my Insta360 Studio. Once those are in my studio, I'm just going to select all of them. I'm going to right click. I'm going to click batch export and I'm going to set my settings that I want for my footage. So obviously I want the original resolution. I don't want to downscale it at all. I want the original bit rate. I want to make sure I'm using the gyroscope stabilization and it's up to you whether or not you want to lock the direction. Now, personally, I didn't lock the direction for my video, but I kind of wish I would have because then I wouldn't have had to use so many keyframes. So go ahead and choose what settings you want and then choose the folder that you want that to go in and you're going to click OK. Now for this tutorial, I'm not going to do that because I have already done it for my footage. But keep in mind, if you have a lot of clips, like hundreds of clips, this could take a really long time. Unfortunately, as of right now, working with 360 footage is a lengthy process when you want to edit it in Premiere Pro. So go do something, go outside, go out to dinner, have fun and come back and your footage should be ready for you. All right, perfect. So we've converted our footage and now we have a bunch of MP4 files of our 360 footage that we can actually use in Premiere Pro. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that footage and import it into Premiere. Perfect, so we've imported our footage into Premiere Pro and now we're ready to start editing. That's where you're wrong, bucko. Unless you have a really awesome computer that's capable of handling like 6K and 8K footage, chances are you're gonna have to create proxies in order to actually work with this footage. And the way we do that is we're gonna select all of our clips here. We're going to right click, we're going to click proxy, and we're going to click create proxies. Then we just choose a preset. For me personally, I'm just gonna choose like the lowest resolution possible, which is this 1024 by 540 GoPro Cineform, and I'm gonna have it export to, next to the original media in the proxy folder. 
folder. If you want it into a specific folder, you can go ahead and choose that here, and then you'll click OK. Then Adobe Media Encoder is going to open. It's going to automatically start encoding your proxies, and once they're finished, they will all automatically be attached to your footage in Premiere Pro. So the good thing is, if you want, you can kind of start editing with the full resolution footage while your proxies are being created. But personally, I would rather just let the proxies be created. So I'm gonna go do something else, and then we will come back once the proxies are created. All right, so we're back. We stitched our footage in the camera software and then we finally created proxies. And now it's probably like a day or two later and you're deciding you don't ever want to use 360 footage again, which is kind of how I felt. But once you get those steps out of the way, now you can actually edit seamlessly and the whole process should go a whole lot smoother. So those two steps at the beginning are totally worth it. But now we can actually edit our footage. So first off, I want to point out, you'll notice that your proxy files are going to have some black bars on them. And that's just because the aspect ratio is slightly different from the native files, but you'll see if we turn off the proxies, then we get our regular image back and there's no problem. So just keep in mind, you are gonna have those black bars, but not really that big of a deal. Just try to ignore them, don't even worry about it. Your edit is going to turn out fine. So now there's one last thing we need to do before we can actually start editing this footage. And you're going to need to download these GoPro VR presets. Fortunately, they are free and I'll go ahead and link those down in the description below for you guys. But this is gonna help us reframe our footage and get a more normal looking shot. So once you have those presets downloaded, we're going to be working with the GoPro VR reframe. And you'll see as soon as we drag it onto our clip, we get a more normal looking shot. It looks kind of like your typical action camera footage. And now finally, we can start working with our 360 footage. So if we go into our effects controls, make sure our clip is selected. We're basically just gonna be working with this GoPro VR reframe. And basically this just allows us to reframe our footage kind of makes sense why it's called GoPro VR Reframe. But you'll see we have our yaw where we can turn the camera. I can point it towards me on the chairlift or I can turn it 180 degrees and show you guys the beautiful view of the lake or I can turn it 360 degrees and show you back to where I started. We also have our pitch which is gonna help us look down and look up and we have our roll which is gonna kind of roll the camera again 360 degrees. Now another thing I wanna point out about the proxies is you are gonna have these black dots on the top and bottom. Again, don't worry about it. As soon as you turn the proxies off, off, that black dot is going to disappear. So just try to ignore it and edit your video how you normally would. But now let's talk about how we actually edit our 360 footage. So we have our field of view, our yaw, our pitch, and our roll. And like I said, you're gonna use these parameters to basically point the camera in any direction that you want. So to start off this particular shot, I want it to point at me and my girlfriend on the chairlift. And I kinda wanna get a more immersive view to kinda see like our legs and the whole background and all that stuff. So I'm going to adjust the field of view kind of zoom it out a little bit and maybe point it down just a tiny bit and fix the roll so that everything is straight. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind is you want to try to have things to be straight. You want your trees to be straight or any poles or anything like that. And there aren't really any quote unquote rules when it comes to using these different parameters. You kind of just mess with them, you know, back and forth and look at the screen to make sure your shot looks good. So for my particular case, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is a pretty good shot. And now you'll see if we play it back, the camera is going to stay in that direction. And I have a cool shot of me and my girlfriend riding the chairlift, super immersive, super wide angle and it looks pretty awesome. So that's pretty much the basics of editing and framing your shots. We literally do everything with this GoPro VR reframe. But now let's talk about probably the coolest aspect of 360 video, and that's being able to turn the camera in all sorts of different directions to show your audience tons of different views. So let's say I want the camera to start here on me and my girlfriend on the chairlift, but then I want it to actually turn around in real time and show the video of the lake. Now, the way that we're gonna do that is by utilizing keyframes for this GoPro VR reframe. Now, if you don't know what keyframes are, basically they allow you to make a change over time. You set a keyframe, then you go over an extended period of time and you set another keyframe. So that'll make a little bit more sense here in just a second. But basically what we wanna do is we wanna pick our starting position for our shot. So for me, this is gonna be my starting position right here. I think the framing looks great. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this stopwatch on all of my parameters. So my field of view, my yaw, my pitch, and my roll. And now what I'm gonna do is actually play through my clip and decide where I want it to start moving the camera. So let's go ahead and say we want it to start moving right here. I'm going to pause my clip 
clip. And then I'm going to create a couple more keyframes without changing any of these parameters. So I'm just gonna click the diamonds here next to my parameters. And now I have another keyframe. So basically what this is saying is that from these keyframes on the left to these keyframes on the right, nothing in my parameters is going to change. And then once it gets to these keyframes on the right, that's when I want them to start changing. So how do we make them change? Easy, we just play through our clip a little bit more and we decide when do we want our transition to end. So let's say I want it to end here. Boom, I'm going to pause and now I'm going to change my parameters and Premiere Pro is going to automatically add keyframes for me. So super easy, I'm just gonna turn this around. I'm gonna point it at the lake here. I might look down just a tiny bit so that the view looks a little better. And I might even zoom in a little bit just so that you guys get a better view of what everything looks like. Now again, make sure everything looks straight, make sure you have a good angle. And we'll go something like that just for the sake of the tutorial. So now you'll see if I start over, we have my original keyframes where the camera doesn't change, it's gonna play along everything looks super cool. And I've got a nice shot of me and my girlfriend on the chair. And as soon as we hit our second keyframes, the camera will start to turn around and it's going to reveal this amazing view for my audience. So pretty cool. You can pretty much point the camera in any direction you want. And what's really nice is you pretty much are never going to miss the shot. If you're snowboarding and your buddies to your left and your other buddies to your right, you can pretty much film both of them at the same time. So that's pretty much the basics of editing 360 video and kind of changing the camera angle and using keyframes and all of that. Now, a couple more things that I like to do is I like to highlight all of my keyframes right click and select this auto bezier. That's just gonna make the transition a little bit smoother, but that's pretty much the basics of editing. The last thing I might do is add a little bit of a smooth transition here to about 30, which again, just kind of smooths it out a little bit more. So then once you've got this shot all dialed, of course you would move on to your next shot, add that GoPro VR reframe and start the whole process all over. Now keep in mind, you don't have to use keyframes for every single shot. If you want it to just be a static shot, you basically just set your parameters and leave it. You don't have to set any transition keyframes or anything like that. Now, the last thing that I wanted to talk about really quick is color. Now, the Insta360 does have a log profile, which is what I'm shooting in right here. And fortunately, it seems to match the GoPro flat color profile pretty well. If I actually use my GoPro LUTs, you'll see I apply the LUT and it looks pretty awesome. Then we can just color correct like we always do, kind of bring our highlights down, maybe add a little more contrast. We're gonna need to add a lot of saturation because it is a pretty flat profile. And something like that is looking pretty good. I like my clips nice and bright. I always add some curves. We'll come down, we'll come up like this and maybe add a little bit of that action. And for the sake of the tutorial, we'll go ahead and say that looks good. So if we play it through, we got some nice colors. We're gonna have a nice transition and we have a solid 360 clip. And then you just export it like you always do and your video will be ready to go. But it's a pretty simple process. It does take a little bit of time at first, but once you get everything dialed, super easy and super fun, you'll get some pretty awesome angles. So there you go guys, a little rundown on how I'm editing 360 footage in Premiere Pro. Now I know it is a little bit of a process, there's a bunch of different steps, and unfortunately you can't just go shoot and edit right away with this particular method. But there are hundreds of different methods, you can use phone apps and different software and plugins and all kinds of stuff to edit your 360 footage. This is just the way that I do it and the way that I'm going to continue to do it unless I find something better. But it works for me, I think it'll work for you guys, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you have questions, send them to me on Instagram, but until next time, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.